Hey guys, it's Chris back again with another top 10 list. And this genre is going to be fighting games. These are my personal favorites from my own collection. There might be better fighting games to put in this list, but these are the ones that I played the most. So we'll start with an old school one, and that is the Super Nintendo version of Mortal Kombat 2. Now, I know this doesn't look as good as the arcade version, but for me as a kid, this was close enough. Yeah, the sprites are smaller, there's less frames of animation, but the thing I like the most about this over the arcade version is the fact that the AI can be adjusted difficulty-wise and it actually sticks to the difficulty you select. In the arcade, you can select very easy in the dip switch and after a few matches, it'll just go up to the hardest difficulty where the AI is just reading your button inputs. And I just don't find that fun as far as a, a single player experience. The arcade version is probably the best one to play if you're playing competitively. Just because it has the, the original balancing, the best graphics, and all that. But for me, I usually play this solo. How often do you find people who want to play Mortal Kombat 2 with you? <laughs> So, yeah, I really like this version. Uh, my favorite character in this one is probably Reptile, simply because in Mortal Kombat 1, he was just a seeker character, but you couldn't play as him, so he had this air of mystery to him. But in this, we finally got to see him in his, like, true form, I guess, where he's an actual reptile and has reptile-like moves, I guess. Uh, I like the acid spit move, I like the force ball, I liked his inv invisibility and, you know, kind of seeing his actual face for his fatality, it was really cool. The backgrounds are really awesome too, it has some cool stage fatalities, uh, what was it called, the tomb with the spikes on the ceiling, that was really awesome to pull off that fatality and then hold the, the two down directions on the controllers to make them slide off the spikes. Uh, the Pit 2 was cool, you know, I liked how they changed the perspective when they fall off the bridge and it shows them kind of like an overhead view of falling down to the ground. But stylistically, I really like the Lost Woods stage. That looked really cool with the, the trees with the animated faces and the secret characters like Smoke and I think Jade would poke out from the trees. So yeah, this is a very cool version Obviously, if you want better graphics, go with, like, the Mortal Kombat arcade collection. I'm not sure if that's still available digitally. I would hope so. That's probably uh, the best bet, but it's going to have that really cheap AI difficulty. All right, let's move on. We'll do uh, this one. Also an old school game, but this is a newer port of it. This is the Samurai Showdown Anthology, I think, or Neo Geo Collection. And my favorite one of the Samurai Showdown series, I was having trouble picking between Samurai Showdown 1 and 2. But I think I'm going to have to go with Samurai Showdown 1, simply because I played it more. I had it uh, on the 3DO version. And it was near arcade perfect, but it was missing a few things and kind of had some technical issues. Samurai Showdown 2 is kind of like an expansion to 1 almost, I want to say. After Samurai Showdown 2, the series kind of revamped the sprites and the fighting engine. I think it had, what was it, the slash and burst system that you would choose when selecting a character. I like the classic style of Samurai Showdown 1 and 2, because that's very different from all the other ones after that. But yeah, Samurai Showdown 1 is my favorite. My favorite character, um, Hauma is an obvious pick. He's like the Ryu of the series. Uh, I really like Galford and uh, Hanzo, Hattori. Those were the two ninjas. Uh, one of them was from America, and he had the blonde hair, which was kind of cool, and the dog. And uh, yeah, it's it had some cool backgrounds. It didn't really have stage fatalities, but it had sort of fatalities where if you get the final blow it either causes a blood geyser to burst out of them or they get sliced in half which was always pretty satisfying but this is 
pretty good version on the Switch. I can't remember if this collection was on PS4 and Xbox One. I th think it was, but maybe not physically. I might be wrong, though. It, it might have had a physical release. Uh, there was an earlier, I think, uh, PS2 and Wii. I don't know if it was on Xbox Original. There was a Samurai Showdown Anthology Collection. But that had a few glitches in it, and uh, I think Samurai Showdown 5 was the censored version in that one. But yeah, this is a very good collection. I really like this series. All the games are fun to play. Don't get me wrong. I like, I like, I like 4 and 5 the most of the newer ones. But yeah, the first one is definitely my most played. Alright, next up. Hmm. Let's go slightly newer. We'll grab this one. This is kind of a, almost like a party fighter, but I'll, I'll lump it together. And that is Power Stone 2 on the Dreamcast. You can also get this on the PSP, but this is the best version of it. Power Stone 1 is very cool as well, but that's only two, uh, two players fighting. This is a full four player fighting, as you can see on the back. Four player fighting mania. It's full 3D. It's kind of like a isometric view, and uh, it's, it's, it's a kind of a simple move set for the characters, but the real charm of it is all the environmental interaction you can do in it. You can jump into like mounted guns, you can pick up weapons, you know, there's swords, there's, I think there's guns, there's laser guns, there's goofy weapons, you know, kind of like, I guess, Die Hard Arcade or Dynamite Cop 2 had some really goofy weapons. It has stuff like that. And the levels change as you're fighting, which is really cool. Like, you'll be fighting on an airship, and then the airship will blow up, and you'll be fighting as you're falling. Or there's one where you're on boats, and you have to jump between boats. I think they get destroyed, too. And then you'll eventually land on an iceberg. So it's very cool where the stages are, like, multi-layered and moving as you're fighting on them. It's very fun. It's sad that Capcom did not continue this series at all. It's just completely abandoned now. A Power Stone 3 would be awesome. Um, as far as my favorite character, probably, I think his name was Ryoma. He's like the samurai character. I thought he was pretty cool. And the stages, mm, I want to say the airship stage is probably my favorite because it's the most dynamic. The end stage is really cool too. It's like a gauntlet of traps that you run through in a dungeon as you're fighting. But yeah, I would highly recommend this one any way you can play it. Alright, we'll go to a little bit newer one, at least newer than 16-bit. Uh, and that is, actually, we'll start, yeah, we'll start with this one. And that is Virtua Fighter 2 on the Sega Saturn. You can also play this on the Yakuza games. I forget which ones exactly had it, but that's a very good version as well. But this is the one I played the most. At first I played it at a friend's house quite a bit, and I was super impressed by it. I mean, the fighting was so smooth, the graphics looked really impressive. But, you know, nowadays you can tell the arcade version looks better. But this was very respectable for the Saturn hardware. Really the only difference is the backgrounds aren't full 3D. I think the, the floor you fight on is full 3D, but the backgrounds are like 2D images. Whereas the arcade had actual like 3D looking backgrounds. But it plays the exact same as the arcade. I think it made a lot of improvements as far as the balancing and stuff, which maybe got ported to the arcade later. But yeah, uh, I really love this game. It's a classic. It's still fun to pick up today. As far as my favorite character in this one, honestly, it's going to be Jackie, just because I kind of suck at the game. And he is kind of a beginner's character. I really like Cage, just because I always like ninja-type characters. But he's, I think he's one of the hardest characters to play as. So... Uh, as far as backgrounds, I do like the the Drunken Master. What was his name? Something, something D. Maybe I'm thinking of Lon D from Shenmue. Um, that guy on the cover, you know him. 
he has a cool stage where you're like on a raft but in the saturn version the raft isn't moving but in arcade it's like you're on a moving raft going down a river so that's pretty cool um yeah this is very fun i would recommend playing it probably on the yakuza games in that arcade the sega arcade in that all right let's see next up let's go with let's go with this one this is ultra street fighter 2 for the nintendo switch really i love any version of street fighter 2 but this is probably the ideal one to play. It's a port of the HD Remix version from Xbox 360. But obviously you get it on a physical cart here. And it's got an additional character, the evil Ryu. And, oh wait, it's got Violent Ken as well. They're just palette swaps of Ken and Ryu. And their moveset isn't that different. But hey, it's, it's one little extra. The only thing I don't like is be is uh on the 360 version you could play with the new graphics in a four by three uh aspect ratio where this you're stuck with the 16 by 9 aspect ratio with the new graphics which kind of crops the backgrounds a bit on the top and bottom now granted you can use four by three in this but i believe it switches all the sprites over to the old ones so they're so the the 360 version still has its own use i guess because it has an actual 4x3 mode with the new graphics but yeah anyways this is a very cool game obviously you know there's many many versions of it but yeah the graph the the new sprites are pretty cool i feel like it's an example of hd sprites done right rather than like some companies will do really bad looking sprites on modern games and i'm just not a fan of that i think if we have the technology for high res sprites it should be done and this game did it really well uh as far as my favorite character in the series uh, it's it's hard I, I like a couple of them i want to say hmm I always like ken more than ryu simply because he has the fiery uh Shoryuken uppercut. I always liked how that set them on fire. I always liked um, E Honda, even though he's kind of a a cheap spammy character, you know, where he can just spam his hundred hand slap over and over. But he can be punished out of that. So I think most people are coping when they say E Honda is like a spam character. Uh, I like I like his headbutt move and being able to switch it up with like the butt stomp from above. So yeah, it, it's a fun game. As far as the backgrounds, my favorite one. Hmm. I would say I would say Ryu stage because that has the cool backdrop. I think with. I forget if they've changed... No, it does, It did have the moon in the background, if I remember. They're kind of like on a rooftop, almost. Yeah, it's a cool fighting arena. You can kind of see it there in that middle screenshot. But, uh, yeah, I would recommend this version. I had to get the European copy, as you can see from the rating, because this was out of print by the time I decided to get it. So, yeah, I would recommend this one if you can grab it. All right, let's see... We got five more left. We're halfway through. I will start. Let's do another Mortal Kombat game. And can you guess what my next Mortal Kombat game will be? Yes, Mortal Kombat 9, or just called Mortal Kombat. And this is the complete edition with a K. It's definitely the best way to play it. Uh, this has the most characters of any of them. Granted, you can get like all these extra guys but this also has i believe uh, kratos on it as well yeah it does so this is probably the most definitive version pc version looks really good as well it's just a missing that character but to me this is this might be my favorite mortal kombat game like more than two because you know, this had an actual fair and balanced difficulty that you could change, kind of like the SNES Mortal Kombat 2. But um, 
it recreated the story of Mortal Kombat 1 through 3, which was very cool to see with an actual cut with actual cutscenes and everything. The fatalities are super brutal and they look awesome, uh, you know, graphically. Uh, it had the... Did this one have the x-ray moves? I think it did. Might be getting that mixed up with 10. But uh, it had very brutal combat. It had good graphics for the PS3. I think it's an Unreal 3 engine game, but it runs 60 FPS, which was kind of rare on those systems to have a 60 FPS game. Obviously, that's, you know, ideal for fighting games, but, uh, yeah, uh, my favorite character in this one, hmm, yeah, that's, that's tough. Um, you know, Liu Kang was really good in this one, uh, Raiden is cool, I like all the ninja characters in pretty much every game. And this had a good variety of them, and actually fleshed them out quite a bit, where they weren't just palette swaps. They, had, they all had their own unique look, which was cool. Uh, the iteration of Noob Saibot in this was really awesome. It had some good stage fatalities as well. Um, but yeah, playing as the movie characters, that was cool, but it kind of broke the the immersion of the game because i don't know i think they kind of went over even though it is cool having you know guys like the predator and and the terminator and stuff but it does kind of take you out of the game a bit because it's like they're not in mortal Kombat, but whatever anyways uh the series got pretty woke after this one as well like mortal Kombat 10 and then mortal Kombat 11 even more so I don't even know how woke Mortal Kombat 1 is, but I wouldn't even touch that game at this point. This, to me, is where the series died, but it's also the best one. So, yeah, I'd recommend that. Alright, um... Let's see, we'll do... We'll do a new franchise this time. This is gonna be... Tekken. I had to get a Tekken game in here, and I was trying to decide on which one... I was kind of torn between this and Tekken 7, because I really enjoy 7. But really, 3 is the one that impressed me the most back in the day. Really good graphics. I think it was nearly the same as the arcade, if I remember. Like, the arcade ran on PS1 hardware, I want to say. Maybe I'm thinking of Soul Blade. But it looked very close to the arcade. It has a lot of extra features, which was cool. I think it had, like, a beat-em-up mode. Uh... As far as my favorite character in this, I really like the Brazilian fighter because that was a really interesting style. Obviously, it's not really an effective fighting style, but it looked really cool. To me, it was like how Virtua Fighter 2 introduced the drunken boxing character, but the Br Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu or whatever, whatever it's, or no, uh, Kepor, I was thinking Jiu-Jitsu, uh, Brazilian Kepora fighting? Yeah, I think that's how you pronounce it. It was very cool and unique for the time. It was something you didn't really see a style in these fighting games. So I really enjoyed that. Um, obviously, he Hitachi is a very cool character. I like him in all the Tekken games. So, yeah. Um, the backgrounds, they're not too memorable. I honestly can't remember much of them. But they're kind of set up to be infinitely scrolling. So you can just, you can never ring out in this one. I think they changed that in later games, though. Uh, yeah, I, I do like Tekken 4 and 5 as well. I had quite a good time when I rented Tekken 4 back in the day on PS2. I thought it was really impressive, but I think a lot of people would agree that this is one of the best ones. So, yeah. All right, we're down to three more. We'll start with this one. It's, it's everyone's favorite, and it's coming out soon on a new collection, and that's Marvel vs. Capcom 2. I got the Dreamcast version here, which is the best version until maybe that collection comes out. Uh, yeah, it's just tons of fighters in this. It's crazy. The previous games were cool, like all the Marvel superhero games, the X-Men vs. Street Fighter, and all those, but this... I know I know people say this is the most unbalanced one, but I don't really play competitively. I usually play fighters solo, so I don't really care about the unbalanced stuff. I just love how many characters there are and just how much content there is. 
The only sucky thing is this doesn't have character endings, where I believe Marvel vs. Capcom 1 did. So that's that's the only negative I can really think of it. The backgrounds are super cool. Like, they, they're they all... I think they're all 3D modeled. I'm not sure if that was the case in the arc... Yeah, it was in the arcade, but I think they look a little smoother with texture filtering on here compared to the arcade. Uh, yeah, as far as the Capcom side for my favorite characters... Hmm... Uh... You know, I really liked, <laughs> it's going to be kind of unoriginal, but I really liked the Shoto characters in the Marvel vs. Capcom games because they gave them that bigger fireball that kind of is like the size of a person when they shoot it. I always thought that was cool. Uh, as far as the Marvel side, I always like playing as Wolverine. He's kind of like the, the basic bitch starter character like Ryu very easy to use. I really like Cyclops and Gambit are cool to use, but I think they're a little harder to use. Mega Man on the Capcom side is very cool as well. It's nice that there's not just Street Fighter characters in this, but other Capcom properties. Uh, I really liked that Jill Valentine was in this, and she could summon the zombies and the tyrant and stuff, but... She's not a very good character. She's very weak. I think she's low tier. Like I said, the only real downside is the fact that it didn't have the endings. But I can see why there's so many characters that would take a lot of writing to do an ending for all of them. So, but yeah, very fun game. Very good with two people. Alright, we're down to the last two. We'll start with another Street Fighter game. And which one do you think it is? Is it Street Fighter 3? Nope. Didn't like Street Fighter 3 that much. It's actually Street Fighter 4, the Ultra Street Fighter 4 version. I just, I played this game the most, you know? I had a lot of fun with it. This one has a great amount of content. 44 characters, that's crazy. That's like almost as much as Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Yeah, this, this had 56, and this has 44. So, to me, content-wise, this is on pretty high level. Uh, I like the graphical style. It's kind of like a gritty cell shaded almost. I like the, what was it, like the shadow counter moves where you charge up and then unleash it and like smack people and knock them over. I like that. I liked how the, the super and ultra moves looked. Very cool. The backgrounds are awesome. You know, lots of moving elements, lots of depth to them. As far as my favorite character... Um, you know, it's usually the same ones as Street Fighter 2, but I really liked how you could play as, um, uh, Cody and the, uh, this guy, I forget his name, the guy from Final Fight, I forget his name. Very cool to have Final Fight characters in there. Oh yeah, Poison is in there as well, if you're into that kind of thing. <laughs> but, uh, to me, Poison is female. She's not, she's not a fucking tranny. That's just some cope that they added in later. Because I think they, they turned Poison into a tranny just because they because there was something about Americans not wanting to beat up on a woman. So they they changed it. Even though like they had other women in it. So that didn't make sense to me. But yeah, this Ultra Street Fighter 4, this version is awesome. I believe it's digital on the PS4. But unfortunately no physical copy there. So... This, to me, is my favorite one because it's physical. Alright, the final one. And this is definitely one of my favorite fighting games ever. And that is Virtua Fighter 4 Evolution. Now, I know, I know, Virtua Fighter 5 is probably the better game than this. You know, it's got more content, or more characters, I should say. Better graphics, you know, improved balancing or whatever. But I played the shit out of this one. I really like the quest mode in it. And the fact that it has the, what was it, the 20th or 25th anniversary of uh, Virtua Fighter, I don't know, it was it was like a anniversary edition of Virtua Fighter, modeled after Virtua Fighter 1, where it takes all the characters in this game and makes them low polygon like the first game. And I thought that was really cool, you know. It also added the physics of the old Virtua Fighter, where you can jump really high and all that, and the 
yeah, the, the balancing was just cool, how they balanced it back to the old school Virtua Fighter style. Obviously, if you want to play as all the new characters, I would say play Virtua Fighter 5, which is on a ton of Yakuza versions. But I always like this package overall. And yes, it's, it's greatest hits, but this is the only way it was available. Unfortunately, there's no actual black label copy. Uh, as far as my favorite character, I forget his name, the... This dude, I think his name was Go or something, and I think he did jujitsu stuff, so he did a lot of grappling and throwing, which I thought was really awesome, and an actual, you know, useful fighting style. <laughs> he was kind of an alternative edgelord, you can maybe see he's got tattoos and like an eyebrow piercing, oh yeah, you can see him on the front cover too, that's him. <laughs> he's kind of a member of alternative culture. But yeah, it's a very good game. I would highly recommend this one. All the backgrounds were awesome. Like they had a flower, uh, a lotus flower, or what? Or a cherry blossom, not lotus flower. A cherry blossom tree background, which I really enjoyed. Always looks visually cool. I think it has a snow stage as well, where the snow kind of deforms as you walk through it, which I always liked in fighting games. And then it had that sort of, like arena stage where you get the crowds in the background those got really popular for stages and other fighting games but yeah highly recommend this one and that is the end of my list so if you guys enjoy this content please like the video and subscribe if you haven't already and comment down below let me know what your favorite fighting game is you know what your favorite character from that game is stuff like that i discussed in this video i'd like to hear from you guys but yeah, I'll see you guys on the next top 10 list very soon. So peace out.